It is the year 2015 and the world is peaceful. Isn't it amazing how far the future seemed to all of us back then and now it's already past? <sighs> anyway. <clears throat> In fact, computers now do all of the thinking for us. As a result, mankind has become bored and invented a new game, a new race, Moto Rotor. <clears throat> yes, that's quite a story for a simple top-down racing game, isn't it? After pressing run, you'll be taken to the course selection and driver registration screens. Each race in Motor Rotor is made up of eight heats with a total of seven different courses to choose from. Next you, uh, <clears throat> hey now, see a preview of the upcoming course and can study the various twists and turns. You then get sent to the parts selection screen where you can purchase an item or two. As the game progresses, you can increase these items by winning prize money after each heat. As the race begins, you'll notice a gas indicator is at the bottom left. Well, a number that represents gas, anyway. If you run out of gas, the race is over. You can buy extra gas containers or you run over the gas refill area to refill. Controlling your vehicle in Motor Rotor is interesting because the direction you need to point the controller all depends on the current orientation of the screen. Your brain has to mentally decipher what direction will come next after a twist or turn. It is rotational in its design and takes a bit of getting used to. The game doesn't seem to swap controls as quickly as I would like, so there is a fraction of a hair delay, which can cause a... Uh, I'm, I'm stuck. You are able to purchase and experiment with different handles, which can help. Ah, stupid chocolate pudding in the road. As your vehicle falls behind, the game will give you a little nudge. And I'm in the grass and exploded. Awesome. This can be used as a strategy if you figure out the timing with it, but you do lose fuel as punishment. It can also be a hindrance as it often causes unnecessary juggling of vehicles. <laughs> Man, the computer's AI is just weird sometimes. Again, something else that takes some getting used to. The rest of the controls are pretty simple, with button 2 acting as your accelerator during a race. Slowing down the vehicle requires letting up on the same button, not by pressing the other. This can take a little getting... Uh, oh, you know what I mean. Button 1 is actually used for special items during a race, which you can purchase at the part selection screen. You have things like a warp to fling ahead, and, of course, grenades to blow some cars up. Yeah! Now that takes zero getting used to. Obviously, deciding what to increase your ride with will help with winning races. I try to upgrade my body type and snag that 4800cc engine quickly if I'm quick enough to handle the extra speed. Ah. After a race, the rankings are given. After the eighth heat, the overall champion is the person with the highest amount of points. Motor Rotor is a cute little game, but the presentation is a little lackluster and boring. You basically get one track with several different layouts, but other than feeling different, you'll swear it's the same thing over and over. Sure, there are different hazards and obstacles, like the aforementioned pudding, and a few jumps. But other than some really nice colors, and a little nice touch here and there in the design of the vehicles, the graphics really don't change much overall from course to course. If it wasn't for one girl in a bikini, <laughs> there would be little personality at all. Speaking of lacking personality, the sound effects are practically non-existent. Even the vehicle noises seem to be more of an afterthought. Luckily, the music is a bright spot with a fun, upbeat tempo. As a kid, I was very intrigued by this early TurboGrafx title because the screenshots made it seem similar to maybe an RC Pro-Am. Well, not quite. 
There's no question that patience and experimenting with the various items definitely pays off, and it is kind of fun. The game seems sluggish at first, but after you soup up your vehicle, the speed will increase if you give it the time necessary to reach this peak. Then again, if you get into a nudging cycle, <laughs> just shut the game off or toss it. One of the two works. You know, it's strange. I like this game and I don't like this game. I've always been very mixed about it. I can generally finish or get close to finishing a course, but truthfully, the staleness of the game does creep in sooner than I would like every time I play. With that said, I have to admit, Motor Rotor is a decent multiplayer game. So while I cannot recommend the game really, if you can get some friends to learn the quirks, it can be a fun time. Ha! Yeah! I just Michael Bayed his behind. Motor Rotor has gained somewhat of a following in the Turbo Graphics community, and if you allow yourself to be soaked into its particular gameplay, you might enjoy it. I myself have always been middle of the road on this one, no pun intended, and have a hard time recommending it. This is definitely one of those very early Turbo Graphics titles where I say, if it looks good to you, give it a shot. It can take some getting used to, but if you adapt, then the future, which is the past, might just be okay.